Good morning, welcome to the second Sunday before Advent. It's wild and windy out there and wet, uh, but in here it's light and warm and I'm blessed and fortunate. This morning I'm going to pray some prayers and read something from the Bible and reflect on it. Uh, there is a service online as well. And that's uh, on my YouTube channel, but this one's going on Facebook. So good morning. We'll spend a couple of moments in companionable silence, and then we'll pray the collect for the second Sunday before Advent. Heavenly Lord, you long for the world's salvation. Stir us from apathy, restrain us from excess, and revive in us new hope that all creation will one day be healed. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's Gospel reading is the parable of the talent, talents. Uh, you can find it in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. And it goes like this. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave! You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So, take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Goodness, I've struggled with this parable for many years, and I continue to struggle with it. There's so much in it. Um, 
there's that historical reading where we're called to go and bear fruit and to use our God-given talents um, to the glory of the kingdom and the greater glory of God. And that's a great way of understanding it and a great way of preaching it. Um, but there are other ways of looking at it. I think we have to remember at the back of anything that I might say today or that we might think today that there's always that admonition that we should bear fruit. We should go forth and multiply. We should bear fruit sometimes 60 times, sometimes 30, sometimes just 10. But we should always be trying to bear fruit. So it's with that hat on, to a certain extent, that I'm engaging with this parable today. Because it really doesn't sound like the God that I worship at all. Glorying in profit, taking from those who have least to give to those who have more. This sounds like the capitalist model that we live in, and uh, some of us do all right under it. But that's what it sounds like to me, doesn't it? So we have to be quite careful in assuming that this really is a parable of the kingdom. Because again, to me, it looks like a parable of the here and now, and the here and now at Jesus' time. In fact, in Jesus' lifetime, um, one of Herod's sons, Herod Aeschylus, I think it was, which is Herod the Great, died fairly early on in Jesus' life and split up um, his his uh, kingdom into three and the third that Herod Ishlas got was Judea um, and he was an absentee king he left his kingdom his portion his third of the kingdom to be run by his hired hands slaves servants trusted lieutenants call them what you will and he went off to Rome and had fun that simple really didn't spend a lot of time and every now and then he would come back and, and what have you also you need to remember that then in six six years after Jesus was born there were tax riots in Judea the Hebrew nation resented taxes as in fact most of us do don't we we don't like being taxed we realize that it's it's largely a good thing and um, funds largely good things, uh, but we don't like it. Uh, we wish that the money that we earned was the money that we had. Um, but there you go. So we have this background of an absentee king. Uh, we have his people raising taxes and raising lots of taxes. This is possibly one of the reasons why uh, Zacchaeus wasn't quite so popular uh, with the people. They assumed that Zacchaeus was cheating them. Um, by all accounts there's nothing to suggest that Zacchaeus was cheating anyone anyway back to the parable of the talents never mind the story of Zacchaeus talents as I'm sure you know were a vast uh, sum even one talent wasn't like a pound it was it was just a vast amount of money uh, more money than any slave could really expect um, to have in their life or to earn even in their life uh, and ten talents, an absolute phenomenal um, amount. And as I say, I think this is this is not a parable that says go off and turn your ten talents into another ten talents, although there is that call there at the, the forefront. Because God would not, I don't believe, I don't believe that God would take from the poor, take from the poorest and give to the richest, richest. So we have to look for another meaning. We've got the um, the analogy with uh, Herod Aeschylus, uh, and that that's good. That that people will go, oh yes, I recognise that. But why is Jesus talking to us about that? What is he saying here? Is he saying that the kingdom of heaven is not like this? The kingdom of heaven is something different, or is there something lodged in the middle of this that we need to try and tease out? And if we're talking about what the kingdom of heaven is like, then we need to think about what is the currency of the kingdom of heaven. And, of course, the kind of currency of the kingdom of heaven is goodness and love. And if we're given ten times amounts of goodness and love, 
and we are called to go and spread it around. Two times goodness and love, we're called to go and spread it around. And if we're given one lot, our lot, of goodness and love, we're called to spread it around. And you know, and I know, that when you spread, spread love around, it comes back to you in different ways, often. Not always, but often. And so a God who is goodness and love expects his children to be good and loving. And I don't think that's too big a jump in the interpretation of this parable. But the other thing is that the God of goodness and love knows that some of God's children will be frightened, will be scared, will bury that love will find themselves unable to distribute it. He's not going to, God isn't going to um, withhold his love from those who are frightened, from those who are unable to spread love around. God will seek to call them and show them how to do it through people who also are sharing love. So I pray that all of us, when we think about this parable, when we think about the currency of the kingdom of heaven, are reminded that God trades in love and goodness and kindness and mercy. And these are all things that we too can share with our fellow human beings. And I pray that we will. Now let's say the Lord's Prayer together in its traditional form. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the